Hey, what's up y'all? Today I'm going to cover everything item related under the sun in Kid Icarus Uprising multiplayer. If you don't want to miss any future Kid Icarus Uprising videos, make sure to like and subscribe and let me know what your favorite item in the game is in the comments below. Alright, since everybody that's familiar with the Kid Icarus series knows about Smash Bros, you should know how crazy Sakurai can get with the items. Thankfully, the items in Kid Icarus Uprising aren't that crazy, but they are definitely a game-changing mechanic that's baked into multiplayer matches you'll find on public matchmaking. Now, before I cover the items themselves, I'll be going over mechanics and item play. So, the short and sweet version of why items are broken is because any damage stealing item ignores any damage reduction modifier you have on your weapon. So, that covers overall melee and shot defense modifiers. Your best bet for surviving items is by using powers and, to a lesser extent, uh, the health plus or evasion plus weapon modifiers. Now, with that being said, the funny thing about items is that there is a special weapon modifier meant for boosting the damage dealt by items. So, this is really meant to decrease the chances of your opponent surviving at all. This modifier is the item attack plus modifier. This modifier allows you to dedicate your entire playstyle to gathering around items, like a maniac, and raining down terror on enemies that are within throwing range. Yeah, bro's cooked. Alright, watch this. Obi. <laughs> this item playstyle is completely legitimate and always something to worry about. So with that being said, I'm going to briefly go over the item play specific powers that will go with this playstyle. First up is double item. This is easily the best item power in the game. Any item that is picked up while this power is active will be doubled. This works differently depending on the type of item. Items that grant you buffs like speed boots will have their duration doubled. But for items that can be placed down or thrown, you'll be given two of these to ruin someone's day. Next up is Item Vacuum. This power when cast will pull an item in front of you. That's if there are any on the map when it's used. This is a perfect power to use if your weapon doesn't have the best movement speed. And lastly, there is Throwing Boost. This power increases the homing properties and distance that an item can be thrown. This power is often the most overlooked of the three, but this can be incredibly handy for getting the most out of throwable items. So with the exception of item vacuum, double item and throwing boost have a very short duration, so you really have to take advantage of the few seconds you have while these powers are active. Speaking of duration, if you didn't know, the effect duration plus modifier extends the duration of buffs. If you want to get the maximum benefit from an item playstyle, you should definitely consider this weapon modifier because this also extends the duration of buffs you receive from items as well. So now that I've gone over the good of item builds, let's go over what makes them bad, or I guess inconsistent at best. You see, unlike in Smash Bros, Uprising can't actually spawn every item in the game, and whatever spawns in is completely random, so you're pretty much at the mercy of luck at all times. I've had matches where I struggle to grab any of the damaging items at all. Meanwhile, my opponent seemed to grab any of the items worth anything. So if you haven't seen a specific item you've been looking for all game, there's a good chance it didn't make it into the pool of items that match. So if you want to live the item spam life, you're going to need some speedy weapons, so ideally you'd want claws because item spawns are random across the map. So on bigger maps, you'll have to traverse all the more distance just to get from item to item. Just a quick side note. When you go through the regular item pickup animation, you are locked into that animation and are extremely vulnerable. I'd recommend running over items or walking over them while doing a standing continuous fire just to avoid that. I believe you can also use Celestial Fireworks to cancel the animation if you time it right as well. But without further ado, let's get into the items. I'm just gonna start with the items that give you buffs first. Now when it comes to these types of items, it's important to keep in mind that you can only have one of these active at a time, as the new boost item will overwrite your old one. And with that being said, the first thing on our list of boost items is the dodge token. This item will grant you auto dodging. This item can be extremely handy or extremely dangerous to grab, and this largely depends on if your weapon has the evasion plus mod. You having or not having this modifier pretty much makes the difference between you being nearly invincible or easily frame trapped. Impact Amplifier. If you ever wanted the closest thing to Smash Bros, this item pretty much gives you that experience. When you pick this up, this amplifies the knockback your weapon deals. 
This item is a potential game ender on maps that have stage hazards like Lava Basin and Forgotten City. Even on maps that don't have stage hazards, this is an incredibly annoying item to have to deal with. Like for example, if you're trying to protect your angel, but you're getting thrown around like a ragdoll across the map, making it incredibly difficult to. That being said, this item is incredibly useless if your enemies are using powers that prevent knockback in the first place, like super armor. Shrinky Bean. As far as I'm aware, this item only makes your character smaller. This item is useless for the most part since 99% of the weapons in this game have homing properties. At best, you'll be harder to hit for the small pool of staves that don't have homing like the flintlock staff. Elemental Cards These will imbue your weapon with a status depending on which card you pick up. Freezing, Petrification, Paralysis, Burning, and Poison are the only statuses you can grab from these cards. Freezing is easily the best one out of all these, so definitely pick that one up. Happy Trigger, everyone's favorite item to pick up. This will reduce your charge time drastically. If you ever pair this item with Quick Charge, even clubs feel like machine guns. You can definitely pull off some crazy shenanigans with Happy Trigger, so definitely keep an eye out for that one. Speed Boots. These Timberlands will significantly increase your movement speed. This is always a fantastic item to pick up. You're granted infinite stamina as well, which is an absolute godsend for some of the slower weapons, like cannons, clubs, and staves. And finally, the power-up drop. This is easily the best buff type item in the game. While active, you're invulnerable as well as reflect back all shots that hit you. The hardest part about picking up this item is trying to get the most use out of it. Like for example, if you're an angel and have this item, you have to make a tough call of playing aggressively and exposing your position, or just playing it safe and sitting back. Personally, if I notice I'm not in any immediate danger as the angel of the team, I'll wait till the last second to pick this item up just to get the most out of it. This definitely has its risks, but it's definitely not a bad idea to keep in mind. Before I move on to the next category of items, it's worth mentioning that the boost items can block critical information about your enemy. For some reason, these items take up the same slot that some powers use, so an extreme example would be trade-off. But a more common example would be energy charge. You could annoyingly end up in a bad situation if you weren't looking at the bottom screen before someone picked up one of these types of items. Let's quickly go over food before we head on into the next category of items. So for food, this is one of the only ways to heal in this game. So you'll want to take advantage of this whenever you have the chance. Even when you're at full health, you should still grab this food just to deny your opponents the chance of restoring health. And just a quick tip, you can use the double item power to double the healing of food. If you really wanted to get the most healing out of food, you would have to have the recovery effect plus weapon modifier, which if you didn't know, boosts the healing you receive in general. But for the most part, the investment isn't worth the return with this weapon modifier. Now let's move on to the stationary items. Gilded Bomb. This is easily the best item in this category. The Gilded Bomb explodes upon anything hitting it, and causes a massive explosion that is incredibly hard to escape. The hit stun you receive from this explosion will ensure that you can't escape it. The best way to get out of this is just using warp, but I mean you could say that for about anything, but powers that grant knockback prevention can help you get out of this as well. Anyways, you can be sure that if you're trying your best to survive, this dumbass item can and will spawn right behind you, just in time for your enemy to get an easy KO on you. For the second. Ah. God damn those gilded bombs. Next up is the rock bomb. This stationary item is incredibly hard to get any use out of. When it's shot, it explodes and releases shrapnel in a seemingly random direction. The damage isn't great, and this usually has a tendency to spawn in areas where people are very far away from. And on top of all that, it's incredibly short range as well, making this one of the most useless items in this game, in my opinion at least. Wow. Alright, well congratulations Tyler, uh, you're the first angel I've ever killed with that rock. Next up is the Mega Marble. Similar to the Rock Bomb, the Mega Marble explodes into pieces when hit. But the difference is that these marbles can travel a good distance with the ability to bounce off of walls. The bouncing mechanic can be incredibly dangerous if you ever pop one of these in a small room, like the ones you find in Starlight Observatory or Desert Tomb. In my experience, this usually spawns somewhere where you hardly get any value out of it, but that's just my bad luck. Anyways, next up are the assist items. 
You can only have one of these active at a time, so if you have one active already when you pick up another, it'll be replaced by the new assist item. Starting off, we have the Icy Aura. This item has ice orbit around you and freeze nearby enemies that touch it. This is great for both offense and defense. For example, if you're using a melee weapon, you can get a lot of damage in if you freeze mid-combo. On the flip side, if you're on the run, this can buy you a small break if you're up against melee, since your opponent can waste time by getting frozen. And just a quick tip, this is just a general thing, but if you think you're going to be afflicted with status, you can actually buffer powers like effect recovery, so you can break out of this status as soon as possible. Moving on, we have the back shield. Honestly, this item can be the bane of your existence if the person you were in the middle of fighting picks this up. This item blocks damage coming from behind, obviously, but I've said this before, and I swear this item seemingly protects you from all directions whenever it feels like it. Moving on, we have the Spike Ball. When you pick up this item, a Spike Ball will orbit around you. This item can be surprisingly good at times, since this item can cancel out any enemy shots that come into contact with it, almost like a back show that orbits you. This item can do some really good damage and can really punish melee users trying to get their hits in. This is pretty important to remember as you can stall melee users with the melee clash, as they get bonked repeatedly by this ball. The Spike Ball also deals knockback which can be lethal on maps with stage hazards like Lava Basin and Forgotten City. This is definitely one of those items that can be really funny with item attack plus since this thing will absolutely smash anything for heavy damage. And finally, the last item in the assist category, the Centurion Assist. The Centurion Assist is hands down the best item in this category. It attacks anyone within range which is already annoying enough, but that's not all. This mosquito with the bow can also cancel out shots that make contact with its attacks. And the last annoying thing this thing can do is throw off melee attacks because for some reason you can target it with melee, which would be fine if it could die from damage in the first place, but no, it's a uh, timer based item. So you can leave yourself open to attack if the game decides to melee target the centurion which will usually be the case because this game is dumb sometimes. The only way you can get rid of this item is to kill the person who picked it up, which is obviously easier said than done most of the time. Let's move on to the next category of items, being the place down items. There aren't many of these, but you can get creative with these if you take the time to put them down in strategic areas. Starting off, we have the jump pad. Depending on what map you're on, you can use this item to reach places that take either a power to reach or take a while to get to. Here's some ideas of places you can easily reach with this item. First, the top of the spiral tower. The bottom floor of Desert Tomb to get an alternative route to the second floor. And the outside area of Starlight Observatory to get back up to the second floor without going around. It's worth mentioning you can use the jump pad to give someone a mini heart attack while maps have stage hazards. Get the fuck over here. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <Hell> yes. <laughs> Next up is the giant maker. When this item is placed on the ground and you step on it, it will make your character a lot bigger, but it will also boost your power as well. Personally, I find this more of a detriment because this also makes it easier for enemies to hit you in general. This can get really scary if you're up against players that are using staves. You can take advantage of this downside too if you place this mat down where you think your enemies will go through. Moving on, there aren't many items that dish out status ailments, but the Medusa Head is easily one of the better ones. The Medusa Head when placed down will target enemies with projectiles that inflict petrification. But you have to watch out because friendly fire is possible with this item. The projectiles do very minimal damage, but you can potentially set yourself up for an easy KO if you don't effect recover fast enough. The Medusa head can be really annoying for both sides of a team if it's in range as you'll have one extra thing to dodge in a firefight. Next up is a capture circle. This item traps enemies that get too close to it. To be honest, I don't think I've ever gotten a good use out of this item. Not gonna lie, this item is kinda trash because while enemies can't move out of it until it breaks, they can still attack, dodge, and activate some powers. Although it is worth mentioning that this is one of the only times you can't warp out of a bad situation, but other than that, this is easily the worst item in this specific category. Moving on to the other trapping item in this category, the Chomp Trap. When enemies get trapped in this item, they'll be taken under the map and constantly receive damage until the chomp trap spits them out. But you can mash your buttons and circle pad to get out quicker. 
This version of trapping is way more effective in general just because enemies can't do anything except mash to get out. The cherry on top is that when the chomp trap spits enemies out, they'll be left open for a follow-up attack because it's impossible to tech your landing when spit out. To get the most out of the chomp trap, you need the item attack plus modifier for the extra damage. That being said, this item can deal the finishing blow, so just keep that one in mind. Next is the Lightning of Judgment. When activated, this item will cast lightning in a wide area to deal damage. This can do a lot of damage and set up enemies pretty easily as the lightning can lock you in with hit stun. If you ever find yourself with two of these from double item, there's gonna be a really good chance that you end up clearing the entire room of enemies. Next is the Atlas Foot. When this item is cast, it'll summon the foot of Atlas in front of you. This can deal some pretty good damage and also has the ability of cancelling out enemy fire caught in its path. It's pretty funny using this item with double item so it just looks like Atlas is dancing on people. Anyways, you'll get better results using this item as a third party to someone else's fight, since it's a very obvious item to see coming when it's cast. One really cool thing you can do with this item is use it through walls to maybe get damage or maybe even a kill if you're lucky enough. Next up is the Boom Rocket. This is easily one of the deadliest items in this game, hands down. When this item is placed down, it'll take a moment or two for the rocket to launch, which actually deals some damage. When the rocket comes back down, it creates a massive explosion that deals devastating damage. Now, because this item takes a while to go off, it's best to put this in a sneaky spot where enemies frequently go through. This item has the potential to clear a whole free-for-all room in one go, especially if you have the item attack plus modifier. More importantly, this is such a dangerous item in the hands of someone in Light vs. Dark. So, for a quick example, on maps that have an obviously good hiding spot for angels, like Spiral Terror and Ancient Fortress, you can easily smoke out an angel from its rat's nest with this rocket. This also goes both ways as well. So as an angel, you can put this in a spot you're hiding if you're expecting a fight to come to you, and potentially snag a free kill or two. Y'all already know I had to save the most annoying item in this category for last, and that is easily the Killer Eye. This turret will target anything in its line of sight until it expires. Besides the annoying barrage of fire you'll have to deal with, this item can also cancel out shots which can set you up for enemies to take advantage of. The best way to deal with this turret is to be behind it or nowhere around it in general. At this point, it should go without saying that if you have the item attack plus weapon modifier and double item power, you can make this item easily the worst thing to ever exist on the map. And finally, without further ado, let's get into the throwable items. Starting off, we'll go over these two bombs, the Eggplant and Tempura Bomb. This can be an extremely dangerous item to have. It pretty much boils down to, do you have effect recovery? If not, then you're in a really bad position because you can't dodge and you can't attack. But even more concerning is that you can't use the warp power either, while under either of these status. Warp being the best mobility power in the game with very little drawback or limitations on when you can use it. Being able to deny that power in any way already puts these items at a higher tier than most, in my opinion. Now that being said, the throwing range for these are short, so these are some of the items that you would consider having throwing boost on your power set for. Moving on, we have the Poison Cloud. This item explodes onto the first thing it touches. This covers a massive radius where shaking and poison status are inflicted together. The poison is annoying enough, but the shaking is a cherry on top, because shaking disables a weapon's homing. If you're on the offensive, you can pretty much throw this at an enemy that you know has a weapon with homing, and it'll be effective in baiting them to use an effect recovery. Now for a defensive example, if you're an angel with this item, you can choose to put this on the spot you're hiding if you suspect anyone is close to you but you just can't see them. In this situation, you can throw the poison cloud at your feet and if enemies are caught in it, they'll be inflicted with poison which you can hear very clearly. The cherry on top is that even if they cure the poison with effect recovery, if they stay in the poison for long enough, they can potentially get inflicted with it again, because this item lasts for a decent while. Next up, we have the Demon Vine. When this item touches the ground, the demonic plant will grow instantly. This item is fantastic for defense, as it will block shots that come into contact with it, like a giant shield. Even multi-hits can get through this thing. Not only that, but it will also inflict heavy knockback and a bit of damage to enemies that touch it. 
You can use this item to effectively block a small part of the map you don't want people to go through as well. So on maps that have jump pads like Lava Basin for example, you can put this where jump pads lead to, but on Lava Basin you can do this to try and get easy kills by having the Demon Vine knock people off into the lava. Another fun one is to use this on Spiral Tower. Once you've reached the first jump pad, throw it on there and retreat to the top. It's worth mentioning that you should watch out for enemies that are using powers like Super Armor, which prevent knockback as they can get through this item without much trouble. Next on the list is the Bouncy Bomb. In my opinion, this is easily one of the weakest items of the throwable variety. When thrown, this item will bounce to whoever you threw it at and blow up when it either touches an enemy or after some time passes. The bouncing mechanic is what sabotages this item constantly. If you're throwing this item on anything but flat ground, there's a good chance this thing will lose its mind and fly off somewhere else and do nothing, at least from my experience. That being said, now that I've tried this with throwing boost, it works a lot better only because it's like a bootleg grenade that just flies to enemies. Maps where this item worked best are Starlight Observatory, Desert Tomb, and I guess... Cave of Spirits to some degree? Basically, the less places for this thing to fall off the map, the better. Next up is a Cyclone. When thrown, this item will spawn a Cyclone that pulls in enemies and blows them into the air once they get close enough. The damage you take from the Cyclone can inflict spinning for a brief moment, which can be pretty annoying if you're getting hit by it constantly. While this item doesn't deal crazy damage, it's effective at disrupting opponents since they'll have to worry about being sucked in, and potentially getting thrown off maps that have stage hazards like Lava Basin and Forgotten City. It's worth mentioning that the knockback defense modifier will drastically change how hard you're being pulled into the Cyclone. On that note, powers that grant knockback prevention can just ignore this outright, but you still have to worry about walking over this directly since you can still take damage and the spinning from the Cyclone. Moving on to the Boom Spear, when thrown, this item will soar through the air slowly and pierce whoever it homes in on before it explodes. Without any form of knockback defense, you'll be left wide open while you're taking the multi-hits from this Boom Spear. This can lead to some really early kills depending on the weapon you're up against. The downside of this item is easily the travel time if you're trying to hit someone that's far away. The spear is so visually loud that the only way you wouldn't see this coming is if you're preoccupied with something else. Take this as general advice, but pretty much any throwable item can be stopped if it touches any kind of fire. So if you know someone has an item, you can help them with standing continuous fire to intercept the item as soon as they throw it. There are risks to this, of course, like if you aren't far enough away, they get caught in the blast radius anyways. And while we're speaking of blast radius, if you have enemies that are dangerously close to you, you can throw this at your feet just to have the explosion come out immediately. This can be pretty handy to finish off enemies that are on low HP since it'll be hard to react to how fast that explosion comes out. Next up is the jump bomb. When thrown, this item will land on the ground and explode after a brief moment. The jump bomb feels like it's slept on for what it can do. In some cases, you can use this for map mobility, my personal favorite is using it on Desert Tomb to shortcut an exit out of the bottom floor. Another example would be using the Jump Bomb to get to the second floor of Starlight Observatory, but that's a little bit risky. But anyways, this item can be incredibly dangerous in the right circumstances. The bomb being thrown can be dodged like normal, but the blast itself can't be. Not without outside help like powers, of course. Since this bomb sends you straight into the air, you can be an easy target for range attacks with good homing, but on the flip side, you're pretty much safe from any melee attacks during this. Now, the real danger starts when you have a ceiling above you, which you can get trapped in if you get hit with the jump bomb there. You're pretty much easy pickings, and sometimes even warp can't save you if you have really bad luck like I do, and warp in the exact same spot. The fact that the jump bomb's damage ranges from great to ridiculous with the item attack plus modifier really puts this in the honorable high tier placement in my opinion. Moving on to the old classic, the smart bomb, the classic game ender that everyone dreads. When this item touches anything, it will explode and trap in anyone that unfortunately makes contact with it. The damage this item can deal is actually pretty pathetic for the amount of hits you take. But its ability to set you up for follow-up attacks from enemies is what makes it so deadly. The only reliable way to escape from this is warp, because, you know, warp is just broken. It's worth mentioning that even if you have invincibility and are caught in this blast radius, you'll pretty much be stunlocked anyways for some reason. If by some miracle you live long enough in a smart bomb, it will dissipate after blasting you away, which can be an extremely dangerous situation if you're playing on a map with stage hazards. 
This is pretty much the last thing you want to see as an angel, and it really will be the last thing you see, too. Bruh, oh my god. <laughs> what a nasty ass hit. Moving on to another classic, the grenade. Easily the most simplistic throwing item, just throw this as something you want to see blow up. Due to its travel speed, this is easily one of the hardest items to see coming, if you aren't aware of its presence on the map beforehand. The damage this deals is really good, and to top it off, the blast radius is really big. It's worth noting that the grenade itself and the blast radius can be dodged individually, so it isn't impossible to just dodge it head on. That being said, here's a little tip for me. Since a good chunk of walls are really thin on maps, you could potentially get some sneaky kills trying to hit people through walls with items that have similar blast radius like this in general. You could end up wasting some items like this for sure, but sometimes just thinking outside the box can save a game at the last second. And before we move on, you can also just throw the grenade at the floor if you just want to get rid of people that are on top of you as well. And finally, we're at the last item for the throwable category, the X-Bomb. Anyone that's played the multiplayer enough can tell you the horror stories of seeing this item. This is the apex of item damage. When the X-Bomb is thrown, it'll take a brief moment to explode into four pieces that all do a lot of damage. The more pieces you eat, the more dead you become. This item has staying power as well because the individual pieces can last a while before disappearing. So on maps that have a lot of walls like Desert Tomb, you have to really make sure that you don't accidentally run back into a piece. This item can also cancel out enemy fire as well. Interestingly enough, the X-Bomb can be cancelled out in its entirety as well, but that takes a lot of risk in timing with the specific weapon. But uh, moving along, the X-Bomb is capable of one-shotting an angel unfortunate enough to get caught by all four pieces at once, and that's without item attack. The worst thing about this item is the fact that you have to deal with the pressure of it existing throughout the match, unlike Daybreak, which is one and done. And speaking of Daybreak, this is our last item in the game, and it's the easiest one to tell if it's in a match because you'll get this big-ass warning across the middle of your screen. There are three pieces to collect before you can fire the Daybreak, and when it's complete, it will unleash a powerful blast in whichever direction you aim at when fired. For some reason, the Daybreak isn't boosted by the item attack plus weapon modifier. Weirdly enough, an angel using Daybreak seems to deal more damage with it than a fighter. But anyways, when firing the Daybreak, you'll be completely invincible until the Daybreak falls apart. This end lag animation is where you are extremely vulnerable to attack because you can't even warp out of this. So you have to keep this in mind whenever you decide to fire off the Daybreak, as it can result in you getting killed by people prepared to dodge it with powers. Sometimes when I get this item and the match is really intense, I'll just opt to fire it behind walls where I know enemies aren't around to shoot at me, just so I can get rid of it instead of risking it all on that one blast. Also, if you didn't know, it's actually possible to cancel the Daybreak animation. As much as I'd love this to be a really useful tech, it's really just a cool party trick that's tricky to pull off. You pretty much just use an attack at the last second possible before touching a jump pad to go up. It's kinda cool that it also sets off the Daybreak noise for other people as well, so it might just beta reaction to use a power, but that's just me trying to make this seem good. It's also possible to do this with warp, but I for the life of me cannot get it to work like once. So instead of releasing the video three years from now when I actually get it down, you'll just have to settle for these failed attempts. But moving on, since I already covered some item tech in the past, which you can find in my video I did on that like a year ago, I'm gonna take a second to show you this other cool thing you can do with items. Now, because tossing an item like normal has some long animation that is highly punishable, you can use Celestial Firework and similar powers to gain invincibility frames during this tossing animation. This is actually pretty simple to do. It's not that bad of an input. You basically just use your power slightly before you go for the attack button. If done correctly, your character will glow blue during this animation, which tells you that you have iframes. And if you do this wrong, you'll either use the power first, or do a regular toss followed by a power activation. And that pretty much wraps up this video. I just want to say that compiling the clips for this video was such a massive pain in the ass due to RNG. But if I ever find any more stuff about items, I'll make sure to make a mini follow-up to this video in the future. But anyways, happy late 12th anniversary to Kid Icarus Uprising. We still have another 13 years to go before we get that remake we've all been waiting for. 
The unfortunate thing is that this will be the last anniversary under the official Nintendo Network servers. So with that being said, this won't be the end for Kid Icarus Uprising multiplayer after April 8th, since Pretendo Network will allow us to continue playing on multiplayer, so you don't have to worry about that. But anyways, that'll wrap things up for this video, so I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace. I swear, cannon and bow is just like so bad. This is just fucking embarrassing. How am I not dead? Can you fucking kill? <laughs> oh, watch out. I'm darkness again. Bro, uninstall. <laughs> Why am I getting these? You guys are trash. <laughs>